Well, hello Electronics Geeks, Retro Computing Enthusiasts, Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. So what's going on today? Well, I had a problem. Okay, I have a bunch of little electronic modules. I need to test them. Basically, I need to hook them up to about, I don't know, half a dozen um, I.O. ports and send signals to them from a computer and um, test them and see how they work, whether they work, um, that sort of thing. I've got a bunch of them. And my original thought was, well, maybe an Arduino. I can do that with an Arduino. Maybe an Arduino Mega. Although I'm not sure I need that many I.O. ports. But still, could do it with an Arduino. But then I got to thinking, well, where's the fun in that? I mean, uh, I'm not that well versed with Arduinos. I've used them a couple of times, but, you know, I'm not that well versed with it. I'm like, well, I can write Z80 code in my sleep. Can I hook it up to one of my Z80 computers? Because I've got a couple of those. And uh, do it. But, I mean, I've got a big S100 box. I've got a Moro Solutions computer. I've got a Nabu. I've got some other stuff. I've got a breadboard computer. Breadboard Z80 computer I built. They're all big and bulky. And um, really overkill for this project. So I got to thinking, I wonder if I could just build like the Z80 equivalent of an Arduino. Just a Z80 processor, a clock circuit, an EEPROM, maybe some RAM, not even sure it's necessary, and um, a, a, an I.O. chip, like a 8255 with a lot of I.O. lines. Hmm, yeah, I think I could whip one of those up. So I got to designing and thinking and, and, and scheming how to build one, and in the process, I found out somebody had already done it. That's what's in this box right here. And I'll give you a look at this project. Somebody else has already done it. They've got a GitHub page. They've got um, PC boards on PCBWay. And I don't really have to do much of anything except solder the components in and write some code. And, well, that makes life too easy. But that's the route I'm going. Let me give you a look at this project. It's called the MGH80, and I'm really enamored with it. So enamored with it, I bought the boards and have been building one. But let's take a look at the project first. So if you Google MGH80, this is what you get. Um, the first two links are probably going to be your most useful ones, although the fellow does sell kits and completed stuff on uh eBay, in case you don't want to assemble it. He may have some for sale that are already assembled. But let's take a look at the GitHub page. And if we scroll down a little bit, this is what I saw that really, you know, piqued my interest here. The Arduino of the 80s. Okay, and this is pretty much exactly what I was looking at putting together myself. Z80, um, a RAM, a ROM, and an 8255IO chip right there and a little bit of glue logic here and a clock. That's that's it. That's all there is to it. And um, that's exactly what I was looking to build and this guy has already done it. And it's got very complete instructions for putting the thing together on here although I just sort of winged it. It's a no-brainer. It's a very simple board to put together. It's a very well marked board too. You know where everything goes. Um, I made a few changes here. I used an oscillator up here instead of a crystal, and I'll talk more about that later, um, why that's important for my design, although for what I'm going to be using this for initially, it's not that important. But, uh, so yeah, there's the uh, Arduino of the 80s, exactly what I was thinking about building. So... Next, what I saw was uh, that he had his boards on PCBWay, and I could just order them, and they are dirt cheap. And by the way, PCBWay does not sponsor this video, so uh, I'm not making any money on this. But uh, hopefully the fellow Chris here who uh, created this project is. But you can uh, you can order some boards, and they're, they're, they're pretty darn cheap. Um, what did I pay? Like, like five bucks for five boards or something it was it was incredibly cheap and this is not um, his only project you know if you scroll down here you can see he's got a lot of other projects on there for a lot of other things 
and um, well, right here, a man after my own heart. He's he's got a Nabu expansion board or proto board. I built one of those way back in the day when Nabu was a new thing. Um, he's got some other stuff. He's got um, a proto board for the MGH80, which I bought some of as well. And he has the serial board here, which will add a serial port to the MGH80. I did not buy any of these, although I may add a serial port to it at some point or not. We'll discuss a little bit more about my future plans for the MGH80 here in a little bit once we start uh, looking a little closer at the board. But uh, yeah, so he's got um, basically stackable um, accessory boards here, proto boards, serial boards, whatnot. They all have a little bit of a experimenter area on here, prototyping area, which is nice. You know, and it brings all the signals through from the main board with the processor on it. So this is nice. Um, also along the edge, let me go back over here. Um, along the edge over here, speaking of all the signals, this can connect up to the Z50 bus, which is a standardized bus used with computers like the uh, RC2014 um, series of computers. And uh, I guess Link80 and some other stuff all use this uh, Z50 bus. So I don't know if I'm going to get into using that or not. I don't know if I'm uh, going to get that expandable with this. Um, but let's, let's go back over to the workbench and uh, look at the boards and look what I've been doing with them. So yeah, I bought some of the um, MGH80 boards and I bought some of the proto boards which would clip right on top of it. I haven't opened these yet. I haven't done anything with these. That's 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 for the future. That's down the road. But um, they are um, very nicely made, nicely laid out, well thought out boards. Um, at least in my humble opinion. Um, I, I think the artwork on them is really good. It really, you know, you could build this really without the schematic. Um, but th there are some confusing things on the back that you really need the schematic for. There's a lot of uh, basically solder jumpers. And depending on how you want to configure this thing, you got to get the solder jumpers just the right way. So, yeah, you really do need the schematic, but I mean... Every single part is called out and laid out very nicely. Great artwork. Um, and it's just, just a nice little board, nice and compact. And it's got a little bit of a prototyping area here, which could come in handy for me in the future. Um, so I got these boards the other day in the mail. And finally, last night, I got the time to sit down and work on it. And believe it or not, I had every single part I needed to build one in my junk box. <laughs> I didn't have to buy anything. Um, so, uh, that's, that's one reason why I went with a, a, a crystal oscillator here instead of a quartz crystal, because I already had some, I already had some. So that was, that was nice. Plus, um, well, we'll talk more about that later, but I put it all together and, uh, last night, late last night, I put some power to it and, uh, it works. Let me, uh, get power supply out and we'll power it up and I'll show you. Got my PC benchtop power supply here, which somewhere I have a video on how I made. I'll see if I can uh, put a link to it in the video description. But uh, they make very capable power supplies. Once you get a way to connect to them here. All right, so let me put some power to it. And, well, the power light comes on. And this is blinking. Okay. And you might be saying to yourself, well, that's a pretty elaborate way to just blink an LED. But I'll tell you what. When you play with Arduinos, the first thing you do is learn how to blink an LED. Uh, usually the onboard LED. Well, this thing has an onboard LED too. And I burned a program into it, an example program off of uh, Chris's uh, GitHub that blinks an LED. I did make a change to this program because it was blinking really, really fast. So I changed the delay counter on it just by changing one line to make it blink a little slower. Just, I find that more aesthetically appealing than a really fast blink. Um, I did not completely populate this thing. I don't have the expansion connector over here for the Z50 um, bus or to propagate up to an expansion board because 
I'm going to use this just pretty much as it is for testing all the little modules I need to test. I'll write a, a program for testing and uh, burn it into the EEPROM here and run off of all these uh, um, I.O. port lines here with DuPont cables off to my modules and, and test them. That's, that's all I'm going to use this one for. Uh, but I might want to pimp these out a little bit in the future. Um, and I think these things are very pimpable, if that's a word. Uh, let me show you the schematic. Move this out of the way. And I'll show you the schematic here. I hope you can see that for the most part. Yeah. So, um, what do we got here? Um, first off, you see all these little uh, solder jumpers here. Uh, there's a lot of them. Uh, which is why I say you really need the schematic to know which ones you want to uh, set or close for, you know, depending on your, depending on your usage case. Um, if you're going to use this thing as a standalone, um, you pretty much want to close all of them. Um, and then, you know, it's going to work standalone just fine. If you want to expand it, though, you're going to leave some of them open. Like, for instance, um, IOCS over here. So basically, that is your entire I.O. decoding, is you're basically, whenever the I.O. request of the Z80 goes low, you are enabling your 8255 over here, because this is your only I.O. over here, is your 8255. But um, if you want to use an expansion board, you want to use a serial board, you want something like that, you're probably going to want to leave that open and build yourself a separate I.O. decoder to enable... The 8255 only when you want it enabled and enable the other stuff only when you want it enabled so that there's no bus conflicts. Um, also, um, if you're using the built-in crystal oscillator circuit, um, you're going to have to close this solder bridge but leave this one and this one open. But since I didn't, I went with one of these um, oscillator units up here. Um, I had to uh, close this one and close this one, but leave this one open. But this leaves open a possibility down the road. Because if you look at the board here, there's a lot of prototyping area. So I can get a couple more IC chips here. At least one more. A couple more easy. But one more. And then um, I've, got the, uh, I've got the quad NAND gate chip over here. And since I'm not using the crystal oscillator, we've got two unused gates in this chip. Right now, I, with these solder bridges closed, they are just connected to power to prevent them from oscillating. Okay? But I could unsolder those bridges. I could cut the traces to VCC. And I could use those two um, NAND gates along with something like a 74 LS138 and I could build myself an onboard IO decoder okay and that could be used to enable the 8255 only when I want it enabled I'd probably leave it right where it is which is uh, right now it's ports uh, 0 through 3 but that repeats throughout the entire IO range because there's really no decoding. I might leave it at port 0 through 3, um, but um, I would be able to enable I.O. for other things, too. Um, I could put in a second one on an expansion board and have 24 more I.O. lines. That's a possibility. I could also put in a UART and enable that. Uh, so that's a possibility down the road. So there's, there's a lot of possibilities here. Um... Now, I was talking about uh, whether I wanted to put in a serial UART or not. Um, that's a big maybe, because in a previous video where I showed you all my electronic trainers, which I'll put a link to in the upper right, I showed you the Southern Cross Z80 trainer and talked about how it bit bang serial out one of its I.O. port lines and in through one of its I.O. port lines. And it goes at a pretty good speed, too. And I'm thinking, well, I've got a lot of I.O. lines here. 
Um, I could just implement the uh, the code from the Southern Cross. It's open source. I can just copy it and bit bang serial on a couple of the lines here on the 8255. And maybe I don't even need a UART. So that's a possibility down the road. But yeah, I think the next one I build, I'm going to put in some proper IO decoding using the unused gates from this uh, 7400 and maybe a 74138 over here. And I probably still have some spare space over here, which might get used for something else. And then see if I can implement um, BitBang Serial from the 8255. So I think that that might be what I do with the next one. And I might um, build out the next one so that I can put one of these expander boards to stack on top of it for other stuff. Um, there might be other stuff I want to do. So it would be nice to be able to expand, you know, just by plugging a board on top of it. So that's probably where I'm going to go in the future. Anyway, I'm really stoked about uh, the MGH-80, if you can't tell. I'm really happy with it. Um, I uh, can't wait to start doing the testing I need to do. It's going to keep me busy for a little while. But when, once that's done, um, I will probably start working on my number two MGH-80 with its uh, improvements and enhancements. And uh, who knows just how far I'll take that. It could get really interesting. But yeah, I'm really happy with this thing. It, uh, and the fact that it worked, you know, first try. Okay, it's dead easy, though. It's a super simple thing to build. All right, well, I'm happy with this. If you guys are happy with this video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Check out the MGH80 project online. Google it. Check it out. Hey, maybe buy some boards and build your own. And subscribe to see future videos where you may see this thing in action and uh, may see its successor too once I decide exactly how I want to build it out. All right, well, thanks a lot for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.